As we can. Am I going to is yet for an opponent time? <laughs> but at the end, it shall speak. And I, lie. I guess what we're trying to say tonight that if the Lord said it, you can count on it, and He'll do just what He said. Come on, El, just like Mass Park, and I say, like the vision. Make it plain. That they may run, and not faint. Though the fish is only for a while, it shall speak, and not lie. For if the Lord said, the Lord said <laughs> you can count on him, and he'll do, he will do just God. what he said. What? Any witnesses tonight? Say it again, right? Make it, Make it plain that they may Only for, only for a while, but at the end it shall speak, it shall speak. and not lie. And not Come on, choir, let them know that if the Lord said, <laughs> you can count on it tonight, count on and He'll do just what He said. the vision tonight. Stand with the vision tonight. Hallelujah.
The Lord has given you a vision tonight. That's for Good you. and everyone, no and welcome to our first no uh, meeting at you know. Jordan Baptist Church, where our senior pastor is Dr. Randy Mathis, and our leading lady is Betty Mathis. For this year of VBS theme, we are seeing clear through Christ. As we move forward on tonight, being that this is our first night, we want to go into the pledge. I mean, prayer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to see this day. Lord Jesus, as we get ready to dive into your word, to prepare ourselves for more focus and more vision, God. We ask that you clear our mind and our heart to seek after your word, to seek after your face on this journey, on this VBS journey, God. We thank you for the teachers, Lord. We thank you for the people that's joining us and we give your name praise, honor, and glory for just being God and God all by yourself. Lord Jesus, have your way in, in each and every individual live that sees this Zoom, God, that sees this on Facebook, that sees this on YouTube, God, and allow them to, to want to know more about vision, vision in you, to want to seek after you, God, and to want to, to seek after your face for a clear vision, God. We thank you and we honor you, and this is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And we will now go into our pledges. Our first pledge is a pledge allegiance to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lap unto my feet and a light unto my path and will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Our second pledge is I pledge allegiance to Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all mankind in service and in love. And we're going to our pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic in which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And that are our three flags. And now I will turn it over to our teachers that are that will be starting us off on this VBS journey of seeing clear through Christ. And our teachers for tonight, as well as our topic for tonight, our topic is learning to trust God. And our wonderful teachers are Sister Wiley, Co-Pastor Allen, and Sister Dupree. I'll turn it over to you guys' hands. I'll turn it over into the teacher's hands on tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our uh, Vacation Bible School for our first night. Tonight, as uh, Minister Maisha said, tonight we're going to be talking about learning to trust God. So before we even get into our dis discussion about learning to trust God, um, I do want to read some scriptural context to you tonight that we're going to begin our discussion from. And so um, I want you to go with me to Habakkuk, the second chapter, the second through the fourth verses. And it says, Habakkuk, the second chapter, the second through the fourth verse, it says, then the Lord answered me and said, 
I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The second verse says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. Three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. For behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And so tonight, as we kick off our first night of Vacation Bible School, um, this is a perfect topic for us to really talk about and dive into trusting God. Um, because we are living in a time where we have to know how to have hope when the world around us seems like it's hopeless. But we who are believers are not without hope when we learn how to trust God. So what does it mean to trust God? What does it mean in general to trust? Well, if you think about the definition of trust, it means being secure, Okay, um, something is reliable, something is accountable, something is a credible. It means that we can depend on it. And so our scripture tonight talks about how we have to, we have to write the vision because God has purposed us all with something to do. No matter how young, how old you are, God has uh, uh, pur purposed us all with gifts and something that we have been called to do. However, as, as the scripture said, um, sometimes when the Lord gives us a vision, okay, um, and we write it out, um, it may be for an appointed time. It may not be immediately. Um, the Lord may give you a vision or um, a, a business idea or a plan that he wants you to carry out and he gives it to you 10, 10 years before you're even supposed to see it. That's tarrying. That's tarrying. It's not coming immediately. Or you may have created a plan um, where you thought it was going to happen this way. Or you thought um, you chose this degree or you chose this career path and it seems like nothing is lining up for you or you were planning to buy that house but nothing is lining up for you trusting god means that even in moments where you understand and you have a plan and you have a, a vision for god from god and it doesn't actually happen when you expect to see it trusting god means knowing that he's reliable to perform Whatever it is that he has called you to, be it in the marketplace, be it um, in school, be it on your job, wherever you are, he is faithful enough to bring it into fruition. He's faithful enough to allow us to see it and to allow it to manifest when we learn how to trust him. So sometimes we will see the promise before we see the way of how we're gonna get there. He'll show us sometimes the end to, to the thing before we have the path outlined that we're gonna get, how, of how we're gonna get there. So what do we do? What do we do when we are, uh, I call it in between a rock and a hard place. Like, you know what God has told you to do, God? You know, say you're a college student and you know that God has told you to go to school for business, but Okay, you graduate with a business degree, now what? That's where trusting God, that you see the outcome, you see what he's told you to do, but believing that he also will give you the path to get there. And so that's what Habakkuk is explaining to us. Though it may tarry, though that we may have to wait um, for the vision that God has given us, be it a business or whatever he's called you to, do not be distracted by the waiting process, but know that even though you're having to wait, it will surely come. It will not tarry. 
And tonight, um, as I pass the torch over to Sister, w Sister Wiley, she's going to talk to us about the learning aspect, because just because we're waiting on God to move doesn't mean that we shouldn't be learning. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't um, study the word of God so we can learn how to trust him more. So Sister Wiley, I'm gonna pass it over to you now. All right. All right. Yeah. Minister Allen, we thank you, Shirley, for that um, scriptural context and how you um, were able to just break it down for us in terms of what was actually going on with Habakkuk and the task that he had been given. You know, this particular lesson really struck home with me, you know, as I read and just began to think about how he was tasked with educating the people of God about God's vision. And so what was the vision that he was trying to convey to the people? It was simply that the just shall live by faith. And that was the focus of the vision. Um, when we think about this, how many times have anybody that's here um, tonight been tasked with something that you really didn't quite understand. And you're thinking, okay, I don't really get it. I don't understand it. Um, what, what, what am I missing? I mean, think about how many times we've all been down that road. Um, so when we think about the topic of it, learning to trust God, um, there was a few things that really stuck out to me. Um, learning is essential part of our Christian faith. Um, it's essential in our walk. Um, learning is one of these things that we really have to look at as a lifelong process. So you may say, okay, what do you mean by lifelong process? That simply means that we're forever learning. It's never completed. It's never mastered. We're always learning. So when we think about how we're learning in God's word, we think about how we know that though the word of God never changes, think about this. We change, our circumstances in life change. Um, you know, we go through different challenges in life, which makes it all the more important why we have to really continue to just emerge ourselves in the word so that we can uncover or discover all of these mysteries so that then it can help us to sort of navigate through some of these challenges that we have. Let's think about this, if we think about it in terms of scriptural. Okay, we think about even Paul, he seen it to be so important. He emphasized, he emphasized in Timothy, 2 Timothy, when he said, Study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So let's think about it. That's another reason why learning for ourselves. Sure, there's a lot of different ways that we can learn. You know, we can listen to, um, we have our preachers, our teachers. You know, we have um, texts that we can refer to. But it is absolutely necessary that we learn it for ourselves. Because when we learn it for ourselves, then it prepares us to be able to um, uh, share that with other people. It prepares us to be able to uh, be more of an um, assistance to somebody who maybe is somebody that's trying to learn and they don't quite understand um, what maybe whether it's scriptural or even whether it's in the secular uh, realm. Um, something else that stuck out to me in this particular lesson, and I really want to see if we can get some participation in this part of it. When I began to look at this lesson, there was something that stuck out to me um, when you look at the talk about it. There were three questions there in the talk about it. The one that really stuck out to me was number three. And let's read this. It says, what is the connection between willing to learn and how well you learn something? Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see if there's anybody on here that is willing to kind of uh, share their thoughts on what that question is really. I mean, just think about it. 
what's the connection between being willing to learn and how well we learn. Do we have anybody that might want to just, let's just sort of make this sort of a round table format, you know, um, anybody wanna kind of elaborate or uh, maybe just share what their thoughts on that particular question is? Okay, well, I'll tell you, when we talk about connection between willing to learn and how well we learn something. Now, this is my own personal opinion. Um, when we're excited about learning something, when we are motivated, it seems that learning becomes easier. So let's look at that spiritually. When we're excited about delving into the word of God, when we're excited about uncovering all of these mysteries that we talked about uh, just a minute ago, it makes us more excited. We, it, it makes learning easy. And then if learning is easy, I believe that comprehension is easier. Um, then when we learn it, we're able to what then? We're prepared to share it with individuals. We're prepared to uh, teach it. We're prepared to um, motivate. Uh, so that's that's kind of the way I look at it when we look at the connection between being willing to learn and how well we learn. Because, see, if we look at it, the opposite side of that, let's just think about it. OK, even our youth, let, let's 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 look at it like this. Let's think about we're in the classroom. If there's a subject that you're really not interested in, you may struggle with it. It may be algebra, it may be calculus, it, you know, maybe it's just one of those you really dread. Our attitude has everything to do with how we're able to learn something. If we dread it, if we feel like it's something that we can't accomplish, then in turn, we're going to, I firmly believe, we're going to have a more difficult time learning. And guys, it is the same with our scriptures, with reading and studying the Bible. Because let's think about it. What is the Bible? The Bible is a book. What does that indicate to us? A book. A book is meant to what? To study it, to learn it. So all these things to me go hand in hand. And when I looked at this lesson, how can I trust God? How can I abide by his commandments if I don't know what they are? So how do we begin to know what they are? We have to what? We have to study. And by studying, what happens? We learn it. So those are just some of the things that I kind of, that really stood out to me um, as I, I looked at the text and really, you know, began to kind of study on it and ponder on it. And, and something else that I just wanted to, to leave with everybody is that, you know, learning truly, let's think about it like this. Learning is an investment. The more we put in, the more we'll be able to get out of it. Same thing spiritually. The more time we put in learning his word, the more we're able to get out of it in way of we're able to share, we're able to encourage, we're able to be effective in what we're doing. When we prepare, we learn, we're effective. Um, so I guess I'll pause right there to just see if there's anybody who has anything that they want to um, share in terms of um, you know, the learning aspect um, as we've talked about it, whether it be um, you know, spiritual or secular, it all sort of goes hand in hand. And just, you know, we have to remember it is a continuum. It is lifelong. Learning is never accomplished, whether you graduate high school, whether you get that college degree, whether you, it, it never ends. And we have to look at it that way in order for us to be again, effective. Um, so again, I don't know if anybody else wants to elaborate on the learning aspect, but those were some of the things that really stuck out to me um, on this beautiful lesson about how we can learn to trust God. Did we, ha did we have anybody who wanted to say anything? Uh, Sister Wiley, yes. this is really um, 
just to elaborate on what you already said about learning, learning, having that desire to learn is key because as you stated earlier in some, not, not these exact words, if you are motivated, you're more apt to do it. I find myself now, if I'm more motivated to learn more and more about God, I now will find that time. I now will make room for him where we tend to, to overlook certain things or, or waste our time when we could be using it. Just, just again, agreeing with you and elaborating on learning, the motivation will push you to find and make room for God. Amen, I agree, I agree. Anybody else had anything that they wanted to add to it? Um, like I said, um, those were just some of the really major points that um, I thought were very beneficial for us to think about. Because like I said, even when we pull scripture into it, you know, we, we just, you know, I keep going back to Second Timothy. But, you know, Paul emphasized, he really emphasized the importance of us studying. And that's in every aspect. That, that, that's in our, our, our profession, our spiritual walk. Uh, because, you know, let, let's think about one thing, guys. Let, let's think about it, not, not, to, not to tear too much on it, but let's think about one thing. How, if we don't study, we don't learn for ourselves, we don't prepare ourselves, really and truly, if we are trying to walk in his ways, learn of his ways, abide in his commandments, how can we then, if we don't study, to know what they are? So, you know, you, we really have to think about that. In order to know what it is that we should be doing, we really have to take that time and be motivated um, to, to delve into the word and know and understand. And I call it, y'all, I'm just like this. I mean, there are so many mysteries, you know, uncovering all of these mysteries. And no matter how many times you've read it, um, it, it continue, you get something new out of it every time. It's going back to, if you don't remember anything else out of this, I, I, I found this to be very helpful. Learning is a continuum. You never master it, you never accomplish it completely, and it really never ends. So I, I'm gonna leave it there. And Ms. Dupree, did you have something you wanted to add? I do. I've been just listening and agreeing the whole time that y'all are talking, like just identifying with y'all, what y'all are saying. And um, number two was, um, have you ever experienced something that you didn't understand and then you gained clarity after the fact? And how did that clarity affect your feelings about the experience? And so I have a story that I would like to share with you all. But um, as far as learning, I, I wanna say before I get into it, that it is true. Like you have to be willing to learn and you your, your journey is all about learning. Like your journey with Christ is all about learning. And if you don't learn those scriptures, like if you don't know what the Bible is saying, then when you're going through things, when your faith is being tested, when you really need to trust God, um, what, what scriptures are you going to fall back on? Like what lessons are you going to be thinking about when your, your faith is being tested? So um, yeah, uh, with that, I'll just get into my story. Um, I am a recent college graduate. I graduated in May of 2020. And I know y'all know, like, it was rough. Like, the pandemic had just hit. And at that time, everything in my life seemed like it was falling apart. I had friendships and relationships that were falling apart. And I was two months away from graduating college in March. And my one goal before I graduated was, you know, having a job lined up. Everybody goes to college. You go to college, you get a job. So I was working really hard towards that goal. The whole time I was in school, I did all the clubs. I had an um, internship every summer. I was doing student work in my field. And um, the last internship that I had done was supposed to be a guaranteed job and it fell through right before graduation. And in early March, um, 
uh, if you all remember, that's when COVID really started becoming a thing. So we went on spring break from school and we were expecting to come back in a week and we just never came back. They were like, you know, stay at home until further notice. And when we did get some further notice, they said, just come get your stuff and the rest of the school year is going to be online. So I was devastated. Like all the plans that I had for school, they were, I thought they were going to work out, but they were just going like in the blink of an eye. I just knew I was gonna have a great time and you know, I was gonna be partying. This is my last little hoorah in senior year. But it was just over at, at that. Um, I went home and I just did my schoolwork online and I was applying for jobs at the same time. And I was just hoping that something was gonna come through and there was nothing. Like companies really weren't hiring like that back then because of the uncertainty of the pandemic. And so I figured, you know, the federal government is always hiring. So I put in a few applications, um, uh, like hundreds of applications, 150 plus applications to all kinds of states and places, jobs I had never heard of. And I had no focus, like I'm just applying randomly. And I'm getting rejections, um, a few interviews, but I didn't really hear anything back. So I was really upset and I broke down to my mom. I started crying to her and told her like, I felt like, I just wasted my time in college. Like it didn't mean anything. I didn't get anything out of it. And she told me, she hugged me and she said to pray and trust God and um, trust that he would give me the answer that I needed. And I knew that how, by how college worked out, I knew it was in God's plan for me. Um, I had applied to several schools in high school and I had got some scholarships, but I only got a full, a full acceptance, a full ride to one school and that was the school that I went to. And I knew the major was right because in college, every opportunity, I was getting opportunity after opportunity. But at that point I was having doubts, like did I really pick the right major and why did I even choose that major? And am I really in the right place? Like now what do I do and where do I go from here? Um, I was asking God, like, what is my purpose and where do you want me to go? So during that time, this is now like April, to July, while I was um, thinking about uh, my experience, I went back in my Bible app history just to see what I was reading and what, what scriptures was I highlighting. And I was reading plans like discover your purpose and grow up and lead yourself. And I was highlighting scriptures like Psalms chapter 138, verse eight, the Lord will work out his plans for my life for your faithful love, O Lord endures forever. Don't abandon me for you made me. And Psalms chapter 94, Verse 19, when doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. So meanwhile, like while outside of my Bible studying, I was also doing the work, like taking the actions. I was still applying to jobs, but I got more focused. And um, I started working with the career office at my school over Zoom, doing mock interviews and asking them to review my resume, trying to fix it up. And in August of 2020, that's when I finally got the breakthrough. I started my job with the USDA in Tifton, not even two hours away from where I grew up while I was applying to jobs all over the country in Indiana, Idaho, like all types of crazy states I've never been to. And um, the job is in my major, planning soil science. And uh, two months after I started my job, I ended up meeting my fiance who at the same time I was praying and asking God to give me my purpose. He was in Kenya deployed, finding himself and starting his relationship with God, strengthening his relationship. And um, it all ended up working out. And um, if, I, it, if it had worked out to the plan that I wanted and what I was thinking that I was gonna do before all this, things started changing in my life I would probably be miserable like I would be somewhere in Missouri um probably not being able to make the money I needed to support myself or um not knowing anybody in the city and um I really just didn't want that so I say all this to say that we have to trust in God even when we think that our plans are what's best and when they don't seem like they're working out, that's when you really need to talk to God and ask him, is this the path that you want me to be on? And ask him for clarity. And um, 
when he gives you that clarity, like you have to be willing to listen and accept his answer um, and be willing to modify your plan to fit his will and purpose for your life. Um, and I wanted to like give a few small words of advice to, to anybody who's, you know, having trouble trusting God or if you feel like your faith is being tested. I would say, seek wise counsel, like your church family. If you're a student, um, fellowship of Christian athletes. Uh, if you're a college student, um, they have like, uh, there's, they, they call it the Wesley Center and it's like a, a Christian organization and they, they will help you. Like they will pray with you. They have Bible studies, like they will get you, you know, in good, <laughs> they will give you some good advice. Um, keep your Bible closed. Start looking for script, scriptures that fit what you're going through and read devotionals um, towards what you're going through. Take action. Um, faith without works are dead. Like, don't just stay stuck and wait for something to fall into place. Like, start doing things to move towards the goal that you are called to. Um, keep worshiping. Keep going to church. Keep praising and listen to songs, like gospel songs that might relate to your struggle. And keep your testimony close to your heart. If you've been through a, strugg a struggling time before, um, keep that, remember that. Remember how God brought you through. And if you don't have your own personal experience, think about your family or close friends and how God brought them through their struggles. And just remember that he will keep you. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Wow. Oh man, I, I have just, I mean, chills just listening to you. I mean, just how authentic you are in your testimony. I mean, and you know, it all goes back to what? You never lost your trust in God. You couldn't see the way. You didn't know how it was going to work out. But there was something in you that, and it ain't something, the Holy Spirit, because it lets us know all things that it was going to work out. You never stop. Like you said, faith without works is dead. You were continuing to put in the work. You didn't just sit there and say, woe is me. You know, you really continued to put in the work and you had, that seems like your trust. It never, you know, you, you kept pushing. So I appreciate that you blessed me with that testimony. That is wonderful. That is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I also want to say um, one thing when I feel unsure, um, there's always a scripture that I have in the back of my mind, and it's Jeremiah 29, 11. And it, I don't know the exact words, but it's for I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for a good future and good hope. And that's just like, he said it right there. Like, you don't have to worry. Like, he is not going to let you fail. He is going to keep you. Like, this good future and good hope. That's what he said, and that's what he meant. So, it's no, you don't have to worry. Absolutely. I was blessed as well, um, Sister Wiley, by Sister Dupree's um, testimony. And it made me think about Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for the good of them who love God. And so we, re we remember that all things um, that we experience, not just the good, you know, we all like the mountain top experience, but we also have to trust God when we're in the valley, not just as we navigate the mountaintop and all things will work together for our good. And the, the thing that stuck out the most to me um, about your testimony um, was how authentic you were with sharing that there were moments that you start to question yourself, like, did I choose the right path? But it goes back to what uh, our text reminds us tonight that though it tarry, Though it, it, it doesn't show up when we think it's supposed to, wait for it. And another part of your testimony that I saw was that instead of like just pitching a fit, you had your moment, okay? You, you connect it to a community. And so we have to learn how to connect to our community. You know, a part of her community was her mom, but her mom encouraged her that 
you have to pray your way through this. You have to worship your way through this. And so there's going to be some things that when we're trusting God, we've got to pray our way through it. We've got to grow our way through it. If you feel like being hopeless, do the opposite. If you feel like you're in despair, do the opposite. And so I wanted to um, also just, just again, thank you so much. And I pray that others were encouraged like I was um, through your testimony. Um, there were some questions that were in the comment section that I, I wanted to comment on. One of the questions was, what hinders our faith or our motivation? What hinders it? And um, I'm just going to speak generally. This may not be everybody. And you all, you know, talk back to me in the chat. Sometimes fear, fear hinders our, uh, our motivation. Um, sometimes fear can be so debilitating that we give up before we try. But I want to encourage somebody tonight, a part of having faith in, with faith in God is being able to trust him even in the midst of fear, being able to know that he's reliable to handle your fear. And so we have to be uh, able to avail ourselves to God and be vulnerable enough with God to trust him even with our insecurities, even with the things that we are most afraid of, fear. Um, for some people, um, what kills motivation is rejection, okay? So what if, what if I'm not received? What if I attempt this thing and it doesn't work out? And now I feel like it was, I heard um, Sister Dupree say like, was this even worth it? Okay. And sometimes when you have moments like that, it can set up rejection, but trusting God is not about us. It's about him. We put our faith in him to know that he is a credible. <laughs> he is able to bring me through this, but we cannot trust him without relationship. We cannot trust him without, um, as Sister Wiley has said, you know, spending time in the word and learning, not only learning about God, but learn, allowing him to teach us about ourselves. Because sometimes we can default to a comfort zone of what we think we know about ourselves. Like, this is my peak. This is the only place I can go. And sometimes God wants to interrupt our identity. But will we trust him to even interrupt that to grow us even when we have to wait, even when things don't happen as we expected? So I want to encourage everybody tonight who is listening, raise your expectation. Okay, if, if your expectation of God is here only due to your experience, trust him beyond a place that you've been. So if I've, if I've only hit this peak, I want to be able to know that God can do beyond. I want to trust him beyond where I've experienced because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Okay, so. I hope that you all have been encouraged tonight. Um, if you have any questions, please continue to put them in the, the chat. We, we have a few more moments and then, you know, we're gonna turn it back over um, to our leader, Minister Robinson tonight. Minister Allen, I, I wanted to just add to that, um, the question as it related to motivation because Many of us do from time to time, we struggle with being motivated. But one thing I thought about in terms of motivation, success is one of the best motivators. And so what I mean by that is that if we can think back on the things that we've been able to accomplish, the things that the Lord has brought us through, our testimonies, the things that he has um, made right for us. If we can think back and we can remember because see, he has an excellent track record. Sometimes we just forget about it. We forget about all those things that he's fixed for us. We forget about all those ways that he's made for us. So when we think about motivation, if we can just think about success, the successful moments that we've had, 
Success is one of the best motivators that there are. And so when we can just re, just sit back and just think about those things that happened in the past and just think about, you know, if he did it then, he can do it for me again, we can be motivated. So um, again, this has been wonderful. I've just been so blessed by everything I've heard and by um, everyone who has shared. And again, Sister Dupree, wonderful. Uh, your testimony has blessed me. And um, this has been good, really good. So if there's anybody else that has anything to add, or if not, as Minister Allen said, we'll turn it back over into uh, Minister Robinson. Does anybody else have any questions? If not, that when I tell you, y'all just I almost ran across, I almost ran around the church tonight <laughs> because it, it really blessed me tonight. Um, Sister Dupree, when I tell you, Jeremiah 29 11, that is my scripture. I live by that. I walk, I breathe like <laughs> everything. When I tell you, he does know the plans that he has for us. And sometimes it's not our plans, it's his plans. Sometimes it doesn't look like what we think it should look like. But if we trust and lean to him, oh, what amazing things he can show us, things that we wouldn't even be able to fathom, but it's a step-by-step -step process. And that was so good. I really enjoyed you ladies on tonight i thank you guys so much for just coming in to just encourage somebody on tonight being the first night of vbs this has been a powerful night of vbs um being being that we are keeping into the theme and seeing clearly through christ i'm going to pass it over to um sister screen She's going to show us um, to get us started with a vision board. And this vision board is going to kind of give us step by step on each night what we could start writing in our vision on our vision um, boards and what we can start asking God for and really seeking God for it and see, seeking clarity for those things. Um, I'm going to pass it over to her as she um shows us a video of her um, doing the vision board. Hey everyone, I know that says Dr. Mathis, but we're just gonna ignore that right there. Um, so we're gonna first talk about like, why should we do a vision board, right? So a lot of times we've heard about it, we've seen it, we've all, a lot of us have participated in it. Um, so basically it's a way to help us organize our thoughts and our feelings and um, around more, more, one or more goals that you have in your life. So it could be rather it's fitness, it could be finance, it could be one singular thing, it could be a multitude of different things. And your vision board can be digital, or it can be um, physical. So you can get a poster board, you can get a bulletin board, and you basically cut out pictures, cut out, cut out phrases that um, you can look at and that will motivate you towards um, what it is that you're focusing on. So we are going, I'm gonna share with you my screen on the beginnings of a vision board for our uh, seeing clearly through Christ BBS. Now, vision boards are vision boards are definitely dynamic, right? They're they're changing. They're ever changing. So when we are doing this, when we are doing this, of course, I have my seeing clearly. And then the first thing I put in was a picture and I put write a vision. So you want to have a picture. You want to have something that motivates you. And then you want to have some words. And here, this was not on my original plan, but through talking uh, today, I know I needed to add these two scriptures. So all things work together for the good. So I need to add that on my vision board as something to remember, right? And then also, I know the plans that I have for you. Um, 
and you can fix it however you want. You want to leave a little bit of space. Um, and I also had to focus on tonight, not just uh, writing the vision, not just um, also, I wanted to also add having faith, which we talked about um, here when we talked about all things work together, because we could have easily given up. However, you kept working, kept going, and that's where we are. And the next last thing I want to talk about for today was uh, studying. We talked a little bit about the studying in the Bible, and everybody's study looks a little bit different. It might always be nice and highlighted the way that it is here. And everyone has their own way of doing it. But the one thing that I heard that was um, consistent is do it, period. Just do it. A lot of times we get so caught up in everything else around and we think we tend to lose focus on what's important and where we need to go um does anyone else have anything else they would like to add to our vision board for tonight intentionally okay all right we're gonna add that Let's get a nice little funky, nice little funky font here. And you said intentional, right? Got it. Anything else? Trust or trust God. You said trust God. All right, so we have write the vision, study, learn, trust. All things work together for the good for, of those who know the Lord. I know how, the plans I have for you and intentionally. Let's make that a little bit bigger. We could throw that right there. And then every night for the next two days, we will add to our vision board for are seen clearly through Christ lessons. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Ty, um, Sister Screen, on that amazing vision board. So um, as we close out on tonight, um, keep in mind that we will be back here at seven o'clock tomorrow and we will be looking into see the light that will be our subject for tomorrow night I enjoyed this so much tonight it was very powerful it was so authentic it was just it was something that I needed to hear myself um 
we thank you teachers for just taking the time out to um, come on here to just get somebody mind back going. Get, get them back on that track of learning how to trust God and, and, and seeing clear vision. Because um, sometimes, especially during this pandemic season, this, these years of this pandemic, um, a lot of times we get, we get foggy in our, in our vision and, and a lot of us have given up a lot. Um, so this is, this is the start of clear vision. We're declaring it, we're decla uh, and decreeing it that we are seeking for clear vision um, on this VBS. This is just the start to get us started, but this is not the end. I thank you guys for coming on tonight. We are going to um, close out in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you on tonight. We thank you for allowing us to come together to learn of your word, God. Lord Jesus, as we continue to dive deep into um, just seeking clear vision, God, we ask that you unclutter our minds, God, so that we can seek after you more, God, that we can see clear and be focused on what it is that you have called us to do, what you have purposed us to do, God. Let it not be foggy anymore, God. Let it be clear, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, who's ever on this line tonight, God, that needs you, God, that needs your help to, to start to focus more, God, we ask that you come in the midst of their lives, God, that you change the trajectory of what they see God said that so that they can see clearly God we thank you because we know that you are able God we thank you because we know that you're doing it right now God because of the believer God because that we believe in you and we trust in you to know that you are going to help us through this time God we thank you and we honor you and we give your name praise honor and glory in Jesus name we do pray amen I'll see you guys on tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Good night.